Welcome to the Anxiety Slayer Podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my friend and co-host Ananga Sivir. We've been serving up anxiety relief podcasts for over 12 years from our home offices in London and Northern Michigan. We often receive questions about morning anxiety and waking up with feelings of stress and worry. And often when we're experiencing anxiety in our lives, it will flare up when we wake up. It can feel like all of our worries are there waiting for us just as soon as we open our eyes. Today, we're going to discuss symptoms and causes of morning anxiety, along with what helps. We'll also walk you through a potent guided tapping session to lighten up your morning anxiety. Hey, Ananga, how you doing? Hey, Shen. It's good to be with you again and to have a conversation about morning anxiety. We have so many listeners reaching out and a lot of young people who are reaching out right now about morning anxiety and getting off to school and getting off to work and and things in the morning that can sometimes just feel like too much. Yeah, I think it's an awful experience to wake up to. I think it's something we all have on occasion, depending on what's going on in our lives. It's probably something most people experience, but when you're already living with anxiety and trying to cope with anxiety, and then you get hit with that really strong bolt of anxiety as soon as you open your eyes, is very difficult. And it can affect our digestion and our confidence, facing the day, everything. And the symptoms are troubling. So you might wake up with a rapid heartbeat, tight chest or shortness of breath. You might have some physical tension in your body, strong feelings of anxiety or a sense of dreading the day. You might be a little bit confused or just feel completely mentally overwhelmed. And some even have issues with nausea and a loss of appetite in the morning as well. I know that 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 in my family has been something that's come up. Not able to even have water in the morning until being up and about for a bit. So causes all of these symptoms and what causes morning anxiety? I think it's it's the same as regular anxiety. It's just that as you come from sleep into the waking state, it can hit you really hard. There's been some research on the stress hormone cortisol, which shows that cortisol is at its highest in the first hour of the day. For those who are already experiencing strong anxiety or stress, the, it, the level's high as we meet our day. So that's, uh, that's something can, that can really give that push to anxiety. In my experience, when I was younger, I used to suffer terribly with morning anxiety, really awfully. And it would just hit my mind the second I woke up and then into my body very quickly. And that would be um, tension, shaking and nausea, really strong nausea the second I woke up. And it was just an awful feeling really taking over everything. Other things that can cause or contribute to morning anxiety include low blood sugar, uh, drinking alcohol the night before, anticipatory anxiety about something that you have you know, happening in the day, whether it be a new job or an interview or going to the doctor or what, whatever, something that you haven't done before or that you're not looking forward to. Of course, negative self-talk works its way in. Generally elevated anxiety that you already deal with. And then negative news on the television or on any screen, as well as violent dramas. All of these can play into the morning anxiety that you're experiencing. So we invite you to take a look at that and cut back where you can. So let's dive into what helps morning anxiety. Because of that information that it can come on strongly when we wake up, you know, we might wake up suddenly, wake up with a jolt, that stress hormone's there. Waking up as gently as we can really helps. So you could try a gentle alarm clock that fades in gradually so you don't wake up with a jolt. Um, I have a Fitbit that buzzes me on my wrist and I find that much less intrusive than a, a loud sound coming in. My daughter uses a wake-up light that starts gradually coming on 
half an hour before she needs to wake up. Maybe experiment with some ideas like that so you're not woken with a jolt. A loud alarm clock is a stress event and it makes us, you know, sit up suddenly and we're awake very suddenly. So that really doesn't help. Trying to wake gently is one thing to, to experiment with. And also, when you do wake up, please don't just bolt out of bed. Don't suddenly shoot out of bed. There's nothing that is more jarring to your system. Give yourself time to wake up gently. This morning I did that. I knew that my husband gets up before I do, and normally I'll get up with him. And I just didn't, I didn't want to. I wanted a little bit of extra time, and I just let myself gently wake up, stretch a little bit, look out the window. And I know this sounds silly, guys, but truly, just it was just probably an extra two or three minutes, maybe 10 at the most. I, I don't know. It wasn't very much time, but it was a much gentler way than to get up and be like, oh, because often I want to help him because he's leaving the house and I work out of the house. So I'll want to make the coffee or help him figure out what's what for lunch or just spend time with him. But by listening and not shooting out of bed, I had a much sweeter time waking up. Yeah, I think another point important to mention with that is if you do use an alarm clock and you're hitting snooze, every time you snooze, you drop into deeper sleep. So when the alarm goes again, it wakes you with more of a jolt. If you do that a few times, two, three, four times, it's going to really increase your stress when you wake up. It's going to jolt you out very strongly. Right. And uh, that's a really unpleasant start for the day. Also, when you go back and you hit snooze, that's a time when you can have uncomfortable dreams, really vivid, um, disturbing dreams or dreams of problems, dreams of stuff that's going on in your mind. So you think you're getting extra rest, but you're you're not. No, you're not. You can drop back into an uncomfortable sleep and then get jolted out of it. So really, yeah, as you just said, trying to wake up as gently as you need to. Yeah, definitely helps. And it stops that adrenaline spike and that cortisol spike. And because we know about the cortisol spike and the adrenaline spike, this is just one reason to skip the caffeine. Because adding caffeine on top of that is going to make things worse. If, if adrenaline spikes are causing anxiety, you don't want to provoke things even further with caffeine. And I'm here to report that I am no longer drinking coffee during the week. I am still having coffee on the weekend. But I finally decided that it was more of a habit than anything else. And I've moved on to chicory, which is a wonderful replacement and really good for your body, and tea. I am still having some caffeinated tea, but it's so much less caffeine than the coffee I was drinking. Mm -hmm. And what I've found is it's been a Pretty easy transition. And I know you like milky cereal based coffees as well. There's so many choices that don't have caffeine or have much less caffeine than coffee. So we invite you to explore those. And I'm so grateful for chicory because it's just this wonderful, roasty, bitter. I've always loved it added to coffee. And now it's just become a a replacement. And if I keep things interesting, it's easier for me to stay in that lane. And then if I want to have a coffee on the weekend, and again, I don't drink a lot of caffeine. When I did drink coffee regularly, it was one cup and often that cup would get cold. It wouldn't get finished. (laughs) So if you've been using caffeine to feel more awake, you have other options. By lowering the caffeine, by having tea or, or something else like a nice black tea or replacing the caffeine altogether with a a shower and alternate the temperature between warm and hot and and maybe even a little colder than you like (laughs) and then I love uplifting essential oils whether they be grapefruit lemon orange even peppermint is is uplifting these are also ways to support your body without dumping caffeine in. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, meridian 
exercises you can use too. If you just stand up out of bed and take some deep breaths and then just pat really firmly with your right hand under your left arm, about four inches under the armpit. It's one of the EFT tapping points. Just with a cupped hand, just really thump firmly there about eight times. Take some deep breaths and then the other side and then just shake your arms and legs out. You can rub between your eyebrows and your hairline with your fingertips, rub up and down. That makes your eyes feel very awake and clear. And then shake your body out. The patting under the arm also helps you feel present and grounded and calm. It helps you feel there for what you need to do, but it takes the anxiety and takes that jitteriness down. So that's a really good point to know. Mm, Thank you for sharing. And then also, if you can carve out time to move. Move your body, whether you go for a walk or do some yoga, do some stretching, maybe a brief Qigong practice. Um, Even 10 minutes is going to have a positive effect on your morning. So this doesn't need to be an hour-long workout or any really big, long thing. I've started my day now alternating between yoga, Qigong, and walking on my treadmill because it's bitter cold here in northern Michigan and not outside doing my walks. And just having that, uh, being able to switch things up and knowing that even a 10-minute yoga practice, maybe four postures, I feel so much better than if I don't do them. And getting on the treadmill, I'm able to listen to a class or listen to an audio book or listen to some good music. I'm moving. And I can tell you, I feel so much better and many benefits to to this choice as well but mentally better and physically stronger for sure yeah and it breaks that tendency for anxiety to freeze us anxiety can freeze us if we sit up in bed and all the awful thoughts come crashing down on us and we don't move then we're caught we're ensnared by it so even to just start taking some deep breaths and then yeah whatever form of exercise you'd like to do if you can do just a few minutes and then take a shower it makes a huge difference and you're burning the adrenaline off instead of letting it wreak havoc in your body so definitely a good thing to do and then if you're very anxious over the top anxious try tapping on the collarbone points yeah if you wake up really anxious and your mind's got you in that hold start tapping on the collarbone points immediately even in bed, just start tapping. And then you can do some like box breathing where you breathe in, count for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold again. So you square breathing, four counts on each side of your breath. And just keep tapping like that, even for two or three minutes, will take the edge off the anxiety and stop it trying to spiral out where you feel like you're going to lose control. My mom's doing that at the moment at 2 a.m. or when she wakes up in the night, she's doing collarbone tapping and breathing and she was telling me on the phone this week it's helping well now let's move to some tapping for morning anxiety this is something that we're going to be doing each month for you we're going to do some additional guided tapping some additional guided meditations as well as our interviews and conversations that we think you'll find very useful And we are also going to be moving more of this kind of material and content into our Patreon for you that will be produced with music and separated out from the podcast and conversation. EFT tapping for morning anxiety. If you'd like to tap along with us, you can visit anxietyslayer.com forward slash EFT and find our tapping diagram. Start with the side of the hand or the karate chop point, tapping on your other hand. I usually tap like right on my index finger. And now we'll begin. Even though I've woken up with this anxiety, I accept myself. Even though I have so much anxiety in my body, I accept myself. Even though my head feels full of worries, I accept and respect myself and my thoughts and feelings. Now we're going to move on to tapping through the points 
starting with the point at the top of the head and working down. And we'll be using some short phrases to remain tuned in to the target of this tapping session. And I invite you to repeat after me when I move through each of these tapping points. Top of the head, all this anxiety. Eyebrow, anxiety in my chest. Side of the eye, anxiety in my stomach. Under the eye, I'm struggling to face the day. Under the nose, all this anxiety. Center of the chin, I'm worried I won't cope. Collarbone, all this anxiety. Underarm, I just want to hide. Now take a deep breath and release as you stretch your arms. (sighs) Exhale and we'll repeat tapping through the points again. Top of the head. All this anxiety. Eyebrow. Anxiety in my chest. Side of the eye. Anxiety in my stomach. Under the eye. I'm struggling to face the day. Under the nose. All this anxiety. Center of the chin. I'm worried I won't cope. Collarbone. All this anxiety. Under the arm. I just want to hide. Now, take a deep breath in and release it slowly as you stretch your arms. Rub your feet on the ground and feel the surface that supports them. Know that right here, right now, in this moment, you are safe. Ananga, would you like to tap through the points again? Yeah, sure. So tapping again at the top of the head, all this anxiety. And the eyebrow point, anxiety in my chest. Side of the eye, anxiety in my stomach. Under the eye. These anxious thoughts. Under the nose, all these fears I can't cope. Center of the chin, these feelings of dread. Collarbone, this fear of facing the day. And under the arm, this overwhelming feeling. Then take another deep breath and stretch again as you breathe out. I know we'll do some tapping for releasing the anxiety. We've named it as it is. Now we can move on to some release. So tapping on the top of the head, taking a deep breath and releasing it. And then repeating, releasing this anxiety. And eyebrow, taking a deep breath and releasing it. Calming my stomach. Side of the eye, deep breath and release. Releasing this anxiety. Under the eye, calming my mind. Under the nose, releasing this anxiety. The center of the chin, I support myself. Collarbone, releasing this anxiety. And under the arm, I ease into my day. And I would just close the tapping session by using the tapping points alone and just taking deep breaths as we tap. And you find this quite a relaxing way to use tapping. So tapping on the top of the head, take a deep breath and release. Eyebrow, take a deep breath in and release it. The side of the eye, full breath in and release as you're tapping. Under the eye, another full breath in. And release as you tap. Under the nose. Deep breath in. And release. Center of the chin. 
deep breath in and release. Just allow yourself to notice your body relaxing and the anxiety calming down. Collarbone, deep breath in and release. And under your arm, take a deep breath in and release. Patting with your right hand under your left arm, feeling awake, confident, more able to face your day, resourceful. And then crossing over the other way. Left hand under your right arm, just taking deep breaths, being aware that you know how to support yourself and you can step into your day with ease. We hope that you enjoyed that guided tapping session for morning anxiety. Come back and listen again and again, and this will become a part of your morning practice, and you will be so glad for it. An extended version of this tapping session with relaxing music is coming soon to our Patreon, and you can support us at Patreon for as little as $5 each month and get loads of Anxiety Slayer extras. Learn more at patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer. Thanks for listening.